Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and we've talked about diversification here on Let's Talk Money in the past. It's an idea that can save your portfolio if most investors weren't doing it all wrong. The problem is, the fact is that most investors aren't diversifying their portfolio by adding more stocks. They're just making it worse. They're de-worsifying it. That's because just adding more stocks to your portfolio, you end up limiting the returns you can get and then putting yourself at risk for the worst of a stock market crash. In this quick video, I'll show you how to truly diversify your portfolio in less than five minutes. I'll reveal a step-by-step -step to lowering your risk without limiting those returns. Let's get started, but first, you know I gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now nation, there are actually two reasons diversification goes wrong. At first, investors just end up buying too many stocks. Flip on the TV or your favorite website and you're gonna get five stock picks an hour, pitching you the next hot trend. Pretty soon you've got a portfolio of 50 plus stocks or more and no chance in hell of outperforming the market. And think about it this way, if you've got an equal amount in each of those 50 stocks, that's about 2% of your portfolio in each one. Even if one of those stocks doubles in value, it's only adding 2% to your overall return. To get any kind of returns on this kind of thing, most of your stocks have to outperform it, and what are the odds of being able to pick 50 great companies? In fact, research has shown that you completely diversify your portfolio with as little as 20 or 30 stocks. In other words, if you've got more than 30 or 40 stocks, then beyond that point, you're just limiting your returns. Instead, aim for just 15 to 20 individual stocks in your portfolio. Now, you can also invest in a few funds as well to spread that risk around, but, but limiting yourself to that handful of individual stocks really keeps you picky about which ones you're going to buy. You end up with only the very best of the best companies. Now, the other way diversification goes wrong is investors have all their stocks in one sector or a theme, and they all crash at the same time. Imagine it this way. Even if you had 100 tech stocks, which you think would save you from the problems at any individual company, any, any individual stock, what do you think is going to happen to all 100 of those companies in a major tech crash? So not only are you losing any chance for a higher return because you have so many stocks, but it's also not protecting you like you thought because all those stocks are going to be crashing together. Now fixing these two problems is going to help you lower your risk in the portfolio, but also keep that potential for a higher return. Here's how to make sure your portfolio is truly diversified and you can do it in as little as five minutes. First, you wanna make sure your portfolio is diversified by asset classes. Now, an asset class is just a broad group of investments that share similar drivers for price and for risk. For example, stocks do pretty well with moderate inflation and follow economic growth as well as being easily bought and sold. Bonds, on the other hand, do poorly against inflation and tend to fall with higher economic growth because that's when you get those higher interest rates. And Nation, I know talking bonds and other asset classes isn't as sexy as finding that next hot stock pick, but, but this right here will make you a better investor and help you earn those higher returns with less risk. So look at your portfolio and figure out how much you have in each asset class, stocks, bonds, real estate, even cryptocurrencies. If your answer is 100% in stocks and zero in the rest, yeah, that's not good. Now, how much you want in each of these, each of these asset classes is gonna depend on your age, your tolerance for risk, and your need for return. But having at least a little in two or three of these is not only gonna protect you from the biggest stock market crashes, it's also gonna give you that opportunity to buy back into stocks at those lower prices when everyone else is panic selling. For a quick idea though, for how much to have in each, the rule is take 110 minus your age for the amount to have on risky and safer investments. For example, in my case, 110 minus 45 would mean I should have about 65% of my portfolio in those riskier assets like stocks and crypto and maybe some alternatives like startup investing. Then with that other 35%, I put that in the safer diversifying assets like bonds and real estate. And a hidden benefit of this, using this method, your portfolio is gradually gonna get safer, gonna shift to that lower risk in bonds and real estate as you get older and minus that 110 from a larger number and get closer to needing that money. We'll get to that second step next, but I wanna get your opinion on this as well. How do you look for problems in your stock portfolio? How do you know when it's time for a change? So scroll down and let me know in the comments below, how often do you change your portfolio and why? The second step here, we're gonna make sure that you're diversified within your stocks as well. You see the 11 stock sectors here and they're just sectors of the economy that produce a common service or a need like utilities, energy, and healthcare. So just like those asset classes, each sector responds differently to factors in the economy and the stock market. So spreading your stocks around a little is, 
is gonna help you protect your portfolio. For example, stocks and utilities and consumer staples tend to be safer because these are things that people need to buy. They also do well when interest rates fall because it makes those dividend payments much more attractive. On the other hand, stocks and energy, materials and financial sectors often do better when interest rates rise and, and a little bit higher inflation. So the idea here is that whatever causes that next big stock market crash, whether it's interest rates or inflation or, or a popped bubble in a group of stocks, it's not gonna hit all those stocks the same. It might mean tech stocks plunge, but, but that other part of your portfolio and the bank stocks, the miners, those aren't gonna get hit as hard. So what you wanna do here is add up the dollar amount for all your stocks by sector. Now, if you don't know what sector a stock is in, you can click on the profile tab here in Yahoo Finance. You'll see along the top here, the sector and industry the company is in. And now doing this, adding up all your stocks in each sector is gonna be a real eye opener for a lot of investors out there. A lot of you might find out just how much you have in one or, or two sectors without even knowing it. But that's what we're here for, to help you create a better portfolio that's not gonna get destroyed in the next market crash. Now, this isn't to say that you need stocks in every single sector, but you should have exposure in at least four, maybe five of those 11 stock sectors. Pick five sectors you think could do really well, and then you're gonna make a list of the best of breed stocks in each, maybe two or three stocks in each sector. Here's a table of how much each sector makes up in the overall market, the percentage of the stocks in that sector of this S&P 500 index. Now you can see it's a little overweighted to tech stocks, healthcare, and consumer discretionary, but, but spreads out across all 11 sectors. You also see examples here of the Vanguard and iShares Fund that cover each sector. And now if you want ideas on which stocks are in each sector, we can go here to the tracker on sectorspider.com. And all you out there in the nation are gonna recognize this because it's one of my favorite resources for following returns by sector. But anyway, here you can click on any of these and see all the S&P 500 companies. That's the 500 largest companies based in the US and which sector they're in. Again though, with just that 10 to 20 stocks total, you're still gonna give yourself the opportunity to find those breakout success stories that are gonna take your portfolio higher. You're not spreading your portfolio across too many stocks and, and are only in the very best, but, but because you've also got that risk spread out across different sectors, all your stocks aren't gonna to fall together when the next crash comes. Nation, spend this five minutes to fix your portfolio and it will pay off. It's an easy fix that's gonna protect you from the worst of the sell-offs, helping you to keep the return, not the risk. Click on the video to the right for a countdown of the highest return investments you've never heard of. Seven investments for low risk and high return that nobody's talking about. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.